Welcome to Talk Lytical TV. I'm your host, Lytical J, and I'm back with another logical perspective. She apparently was the forgotten woman of NYCHA until construction workers made a terrible discovery. They saw the woman's skeleton in her bedroom while working on the top floor at South Jamaica houses. Yeah, we are learning tonight she may have been dead nearly two years. Pick Summons Mary Murphy joining us now with more details. Mary. Such a sad story. The woman's name was Marilyn McMichael and her skeleton was found on April 26th. She had two foster sisters who tried to report her missing back in January, but they say nobody seemed to care. Construction workers are tearing up the road outside South Jamaica houses on 160th Street. But not too many people know about the discovery made inside the building on April 26th. I just heard it was a woman found in her bed. She was found in her bed upstairs on the seventh floor. Her name was Marilyn McMichael and she was 54 years old. Apparently her windows were open, so the men on the scaffolding saw her in her bed, dead, skeletal form. Simone Best Jones and Sharman McElrith are foster sisters who grew up with Marilyn McMichael, known as May, in a loving family. They said May developed emotional problems over the years and called them after the first wave of the pandemic in 2020. She wanted me to take her to the hospital. She sounded a little manic, and I was trying to explain to her they're not accepting people at the hospitals. The sisters say they tried knocking on May's door over the next year. We would never get her to come to the door. Was that unusual or had she done it before? That was not unusual for May. They say they went to the NYCHA office in South Jamaica houses in January to report her missing. They told us that she hadn't paid rent in over a year. They said that my parents were on the emergency card and I let them know that both of them have been dead for over 20 years. The sisters claim NYCHA personnel and the NYPD cop didn't show much empathy but eventually took them to the seventh floor and tried to use a master key on McMichael's door. It didn't work. And they never tried again. They said they would. They said they had an investigator that would find her. Marilyn McMichael's sisters told us that three months after they tried to file a missing persons report here at the NYCHA offices at South Jamaica Houses, they received terrible news from their sister's neighbor. Decomposed in an apartment. You treat a dog better than that. PIX11 News paid a visit to the basement NYCHA office. Do you know why they didn't check for three months? When we asked to speak with a supervisor, the NYCHA press office only sent a brief response to my email. Quote, please reach out to NYPD for more information as this is a police matter. The sisters say multiple people need to answer for what happened. She was treated to me less than human. So what, she lived in public housing. It should have made a difference. Police told us when they entered McMichael's apartment on April 26th, they noticed the calendar had not been used since August 2020. It was almost frozen in time. The medical examiner had to use x-rays to identify the woman's remains. All right, let's get lytical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read some of this article that I have in front of me. Okay, so South Jamaica, Queens, the skeleton of a Queens woman who was reported missing in January was discovered accidentally by NYSHA, New York City Housing Authority workers, three months later while they were doing maintenance outside her bedroom window at South Jamaica houses in Queens. PIX11 News has now learned the woman Marilyn McMichael, 54, may have been deceased since August of 2020. That's the last time a page was turned on her calendar. Apparently her windows were open so the men on the scaffold saw her in her bed dead, said Simone Best Jones, one of McMichael's foster sister. The discovery in apartment 7H was made on April 28th. Bess Jones and another foster sister, Sharman McIrthel, said they found said they first became concerned about McMichael in June 2020 as the first wave of the pandemic was ebbing. They said McMichael called them saying she wanted to go to the hospital. She had a history of emotional problems, they added. 
She wanted me to take her to the hospital, Sherman McAery said. She didn't sound sick at all. She sounded a little manic. And I was trying to explain to her they are not accepting people at the hospital. The sister said she was, um, she and Bess Jones did go to McMichael's apartment on the seventh floor of South Jamaica houses and knocked on the door. They kept calling and got no response. We would never get her to come to the door, Bess Jones said, telling Pix11 News this was not unusual behavior for McMichael. She wouldn't talk to us for years because she didn't want to. But the sisters became concerned as the pandemic stretched beyond a second year. On January 26, McIrthel and Bess Jones decided to file a missing persons report. Well, why the fuck they didn't file a missing persons report back in August? Like, after 30 days went by and they noticed that they still wasn't able to find her, that's when they should have went ahead and um, filed the police report. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the article here. Um, key details for me. Okay, so she's been missing since August of 2020, right? So we're thinking a year and a half, a deceased body rotting away in an apartment in the projects, and this goes undetected. Well, if her windows was open, that might have something to maybe do with alleviating the smell a little bit. I'm not saying that maybe there wasn't still a stench, but... The stench versus windows being locked up as opposed to windows being open for the last year and a half. That might tell us why we didn't have a smell. Also, August, mm, we're getting towards the end of summer. So September, October-ish, we're getting into fall, right? Then we head into winter. So pretty much her body was, I guess, on preserve for the next couple of months until it went into the summer of 2021 by then maybe she could have been decomposed and this is why the smell or anything went undetected but here's where a little negligence come in at New York City Housing Authority is very infamous here for knowing to be the slumlord of the city. They own majority of the buildings here, majority of the projects, and they're unkept, not clean. The workers don't really care about the atmosphere. And pretty much you think she's been missing for shit a year and a half. She's not paying rent. Okay? So if she's not paying rent, then that would prompt the office, the, the building office where she resides at, to kind of do a little bit more digging as opposed to why the rent is not being paid and try to reach out to her and nothing. Okay, as far as the sisters, they didn't, um, they didn't report her missing until like six months later, which is weird. Once August go by, I get it. She had emotional problems. You know, she didn't really talk to them um, if she didn't feel like it. But at the same time, you said she called you and she sounded a little manic and maybe needed someone at the time to talk to. So if she was sounding manic a couple of weeks before you just didn't hear from her again, well, I would think that was the time to report her missing. And I get it. Maybe they got the runaround or, you know, she's an adult. Maybe she didn't run off. Maybe she just don't want to be contacted. Some people are like that. But at the end of the day, reporting her missing six months later, that is just so crazy to me. But, um, you know, rest in peace to the lady. Um, hopefully they can find out um, how she passed away. I'm would assume that maybe it was natural causes um you know maybe if she had emotional emotional problems we don't want to stretch it to like where maybe she could have harmed herself but um i guess this is where they would you know find out exactly um how she passed away but this is a very sad story this is this is definitely um pointing more fingers towards how nisha is definitely not um, keeping up with their tenants 
with their buildings and they just don't know what the fuck is going on and as you can see in the news clip that's how Nisha act I'm telling you that's how they act like they don't want to answer any questions they don't want to give you anything or any type of sources on who to speak to about when they fuck up and they fuck up a lot they fuck up a lot Rest in peace to this lady. This probably could have been avoided. They could have found her a long time ago and give her the proper burial that she needed. But unfortunately, she was discovered in a different way. Jump down in my comment section and let me know what you think of this story. If you're from New York, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Nisha is definitely, I'm not saying that they're the blame or whatever. I'm just saying like the concern and the, the urgency of a resident of yours that's missing. You can't get into her apartment. No one is able to get to her and you guys do nothing about it. Also, you're not receiving any rent. Now, I know it takes some time to evict people here in New York, but at the same time, if, if, if a tenant that pays their rent all the time on time and all of a sudden I don't see any more payments coming in or something like that, there should be some type of outreach. Let me know what you feel about this story down in my comments. Thanks. That concluded the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. Bye.